What's up guys, it's AO. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys basically the entire process of how I went from a hard stuck Diamond 1 last season to now being an Unreal. Uh, this is going to be a no BS guide. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm going to tell you like it is. And yeah, so without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy the video and stick around till after. Appreciate you. 61 dead, 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 dead. dead. Okay, they're full build fighting us. Cracked. Oh my god, I cracked one. No, it's a duo. Nice. Build, build, build. Dead, bro. You're him! You're him! I just griefed all your mats. I'm so sorry. Yeah, what the fuck? Bro, you only have two on her! Third party around here. Okay, boys. Bro, I got I got the finish anyway. Damn. Good job, good job, good job. Right, you gotta make it right here. I know, bro. Imagine you get 99 now. I got it, bro. You're the best. Let's Holy oh. shit, dude. You're crazy, you man. Me. You're crazy. Bro, I didn't, we didn't do anything. We can't. So, I told you guys that this is going to be a no BS guide. So, with that being said, the reason why you are not Unreal yet, or Elite, or even Champs, is because you are not good enough to get to that point yet. So, in this video, I'm going to be breaking down everything I did to go from, like I said, a hard stuck diamond one last season to an unreal this season. And it, it is a lot. Like, you have to be willing to put the time in. If you do not have the time to put in, you need to maximize the little time you do have if you're really trying to go for this rank. Like, regardless, the ranks honestly don't even, like, matter that much. What matters is just the skill level you can get to in order to get to them. So... I am going to be showing you guys my Kovacs routine, my favorite creative maps I use, the creative maps I use for specifically mechanical training, and then the creative maps I use specifically for fighting people and just practicing sort of in-game things I would do. So anyway, with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and hop into my Kovacs routine. Hop in and I'll show you guys some of my favorite routines and what's worked for me, things like that. Okay, so I'll leave some of my favorite routines down in the description below, but you go to online scenarios and you're basically just gonna type in whatever ones I recommend or whatever ones you find on YouTube. Do your own research too with these things. Some other people may have way better routines than I do and if you think that applies better to you, then do those. Don't just follow what I do for sure. Go out there and like see what works for you. But some of my favorite ones are the one wall six targets. It's literally just flicking with a pistol, essentially, but I really like it. And then you have Air Invincible, which is tracking, ascended tracking. Um, the B180 is also tracking as well. I have a lot of tracking ones. Tracking to me, especially, it, it applies to ARs, it can apply to submachine guns, like everything in Fortnite, tracking applies to everything. The one thing flicking applies to mostly a shotgun flicking. That is probably the one thing flicking really is specific for, but it can also help with like initial point of contact for your bullets with a gun is um, flicking for any of the other ones as well. So yes, 
one wall six targets i'll leave all these in the description below as well air invincible ascended tracking b180 what else do we have here we have narrow strafe i really like overhead jumps is really annoying to do but necessary i enjoy it pressure aiming is pretty decent too reactive flick is good all the reflex flicking if you guys can do these do them like get really good at the reflex flicking it will help tremendously with reaction time uh skeet tracking is good as well surge tags is all right it's okay it's literally what it says surge tags and then yeah thin aiming long is good as well it's also tracking so those are some of my favorite ones i usually just hop in there i will take something i'm really bad at though from like the previous day or whatever and just apply it to my routine the next day so anyway just go off of that but really recommend this guys please please do yourself a favor and get on the kovacs routine if you're on controller use the in-game one i'll show you guys in-game aim trainers for if you're on controller because that's really all it's going to help you with you have aim assist so you, you know eventually with enough playing time and just specifically focusing on your aiming you'll get there easy no problem with controller anyway let's get on to some of the maps that have really helped transform my game one of the most crucial parts of getting better at this game is practicing your mechanics. And that's something I realized, you know, kind of recently, actually, from one of my you know, duo partners, Scott. He, you know, stressed highly just to get better at my mechanics. And in a very short span of time, it did a lot for my game. So I'm actually going to leave a playlist of all the videos that have helped me get to this point right now that I'm at. And there are going to be some videos in there that I've thrown in that apply for the future as well the other important thing i'm going to stress to you is to just watch competitive games like watch scrims if someone's streaming them watch the pros even watch people who aren't as good as pros who you can learn something from and you're kind of learning from them in real time as well because they're not at that point yet where they're tier one pro or anything so i'd recommend just consuming a lot of information within this game because watching for me if you're a visual learner especially, has really helped me a lot too. So anyway, I'm going to leave a playlist, like I said, of all the videos that have helped me get to this point. There's going to be um, certain retake videos as well that I've that I've learned and applied to my games in game. And I will show you the maps where you want to be practicing those. If you're struggling with editing specifically, just editing your pieces, Hop into Flea's Editing Dictionary. It is really good. You have a few options from tunnels to ramp ups to ramp downs to like edit towers where you're editing down. It's really, really good. So again, if you're struggling specifically with just editing your pieces, use this map. It's really, really good. And you kind of have to get really good at these first before you can move to building and editing. If that makes sense, you know, you want to get the fundamentals down. So anyway, Flea's Editing Dictionary codes right there. Go check it out. The other one too to practice on certain targets is Raiders Peace Control Practice Map V3. The code is right here. I'll also leave in this playlist, I'm going to link for you guys in the description, Raider himself actually going through this map and showing you how to do these drills. It's sick. He's, he's really great at that. So there are two free build maps that I use again to practice the mechanics that I've talked to you guys about the from the video playlist down below. Um, there's smooth crank simulator. This one doesn't have as many options. It is a prettier map. So if you guys care about that, I guess. But what I'd recommend doing is going all the way to crank simulator OG because this one, you can actually set the speed at which you're editing at all the way down to point two. And then you could do point three, point four, point five all the way up to two times speed so this one is a lot better than the smooth crank simulator and there may be other ones out there but find a map that allows you to change the editing speed or build speed whatever one you know you're working on because that is so critical to learning about everything else in this game really you need to have your mechanics at a pretty decent level because all the players in unreal or all the people who are really good at scrims cash outs, whatever they have crazy mechanics usually and if they don't, you may as well still get them anyway, because it's going to help you regardless. So anyway, those are my three maps that I really enjoy using when it comes to learning just mechanic training. So if you're a controller player or if you do not have the money for Kovacs, I would either recommend if you're a keyboard and mouse, I'd recommend aim labs. 
And if you're controller, I would recommend Clix's Aim Trainer. This is a really good map, 20 plus scenarios, improve your aim. And there's a lot of things in here. There's tracking here. It's a little bit buggy though. That's why I don't like it as opposed to Kovacs because you know, Fortnite creative maps can only go so far when something like Kovacs, which is designed specifically for aim training across so many games can just give you thousands of different scenarios. So it is well worth the investment for Kovacs for sure. I will keep stressing that. But anyway, this is the code for it up here, up top. Just plug that in and click the same trainer right there. Some other maps that have really helped me throughout this whole process are speed realistic 1v1s where you're literally propelled into someone's box um, and you have to basically build fight them. That is essentially what it is. So very good map if you just want repetition fighting people. Really, really good. Another big shout out to Finus. This one's really, really good. The finest realistic 1v1s, you basically are just on two opposite sides of a map or a scenario and you're building up to each other and fighting each other. Basically is what it is. Crosshair placement, peace control and aim is also another great map. Definitely check this one out as well. It's a really good warm up map as well. So yeah. Also one of my favorite ones if you're just specifically looking for peace control is peace control 1v1. The code is right here as well. Also, if you want a really, really, really bare bones approach to peace control, go check out this one, How to Peace Control. It's by Jivin as well. Uh, he actually does voice the tutorials if you want him to, uh, which is kind of funny. So yeah, go give this one a check out as well. Rapid Cash Realistics, if you have a pretty decent friend that you would like to practice this with, great map for that. It's a 1v1 map and it's not usually populated at all but it's well worth it if you know someone and have someone who you want to play this with. We have my all time, probably favorite creative map here. Uh, for right now, at least it is the headshot only box fight. This one really takes all the work that you do from aim training and puts it in a map. It is literally as it says, headshot only. So if you do not hit your headshots, you're not getting the kill. Even if you hit a headshot, but it's not a full like 185 headshot, you're not getting the kill. You're just not. So it is really, really good. I highly recommend, if you don't do anything else, do this map because you can build, you can box fight. It's a free for all and it's headshot only. So you have to be exactly precise with your aim. It is the best probably warm up for any tournament I played in, whatever. This is the best map I've played. So, so good. So Panville, again, coming out with the great maps. And I have another map to shout out from him as well. The Panville box fights. If you just want reps box fighting people, which again, box fighting is really, really important. It's applicable to almost any scenario within competitive use this map this map is so so good there are a lot of really horrible players in there but um you know if you find someone around your same skill level who you can practice with and get better with as well use this map it is really really good the other crucial thing i will stress is that you want to be playing certain things or with certain people that objectively just are better than what you're going to get in ranked you know and when i say better it means harder like more difficult so what that means is scrimming especially is going to be a lot harder generally than playing ranked in Fortnite. The scrims are a competitive loot pool so it's not the same items and stuff you would get in a casual game or a ranked game. So this is one of the servers I do use. Um, it is NA Open scrim server and all these are run on NA Central so if you're not in NA Central, it doesn't really matter. You just have to set your region to NA Central in the game to be able to play them, that's all. So anyway, if you're looking for people to play with and get better with, like I said, that is one of the more crucial parts is finding a practice partner or duo partner that you really vibe with that also, you know, they have the same goals as you. Maybe they're a little bit better than you so they can challenge you and punish you for your mistakes. But this is what I do. So I'd, I'd join NA Opens, I'd find FBL scrims, I'd find Vital scrims, Mono scrims is okay, but I'd go with the other ones for sure. And this is what I do. I'd scroll down. I would type looking for players. This is how I found Scott, by the way, fucking amazing guy. But I, I literally typed in looking for duo for future events. I am unreal ranked. 
And if you have PR, you could type in your PR. If you don't know what that is, just ignore it. Doesn't really, you know, doesn't matter for this video. I'm on real ranked. I would say I'm 171 PR because that's my PR. DM me, be chill. Some people like to put their other requirements in there. Like some people make a whole essay, right? Like saying basically what they're looking for, what requirements they have for you, things like, like this, this guy. Nothing against him, but you know, this is a lot, man. This is really a lot. Um, but some people need to do that because people in these servers are goofballs. They're they're absolute cornballs. Like, there are so many kids with massive egos who just aren't that great at the game, like just talking out of their ass. Like, so you just really gotta watch yourself with that. But this is what I do. This is the process to finding a duo partner or a practice partner that challenges you, that that you know allows you to get better and and give you some insight into what you're doing, what you're not doing, things like that. It's it's really good. So if you find someone you click with and vibe with from these servers, go for it all the way. And like I said, basically anything that you play regarding competitive or scrims, those two things are so much harder than ranked. So assume the people that you're playing in Unreal ranked lobbies are going to be on average worse than the players you're going to be playing in scrim servers and they have things like solo scrims that i recommend everyone to get on because this this if there's one thing you do from this video it's just solo scrims like seriously if you just want to get better as a player solo scrim learn all the things that i show you in that playlist down below but again apply it to scrims and then apply it to cash cups apply it to the solo victory cups apply all these things in those modes and I promise you ranked will come second nature. It, it's it's so much easier than these other game modes on average. So let's actually get into like the meat of what you guys clicked on this video for, right? How to get Unreal Ranked. Let's say that you have scrimmed, you put in the time and you feel yourself massively improving. You're winning more just casual games. You're performing well in the scrims. You're doing all those things first before going to ranked. Then this is where I'd suggest you start. One of the most underrated things is finding a good drop spot. Now, if you're trying to really go for your ranks, I would not, unless you're an amazing fighter, I would not recommend going to POIs. And if you don't know what POIs are, they're a point of interest. Basically, I'll pull them up now for you. You're going to want to utilize this website called Fortnite.gg. And here you will see literally a map of all of the locations in the game you can toggle things on the left that you want to see if you want to see just name locations not landmarks and you just uncheck that but yeah um for a while my drop spot was actually down here i would you know let's do landmarks we'll do scroll up do chests you can see how many chests spawn the other important thing to definitely keep in mind are slurp trucks so slurp truck can get you up to 200 health um cooler is also another very important thing so yeah i would land my route would basically be starting here rotating to here to get this chest up here and then you take a porta potty and you would essentially go to the other side of this place so you take this you go here and yeah i kind of got bombarded by a lot of people at this spot so i had to switch up drop spots don't be afraid if you are getting landed on constantly and you're not a great off spawn fighter just switch your spot up to something way more low key and work your way in so anyway yeah what ended up being my solo drop spot that got me unreal the easiest was this spot right here it is so low key that it is insane but basically you can draw a loot route and this i'd recommend this to anyone i'll link videos in my playlist down below of how to make a drop map i am not going to get into that in this video but um that is also crucial as well but what i do is is i'd pick a spot and i'd map out you know what you want to maybe do so in this spot also especially there is a forecast tower that sometimes spawns so that changes things up a little bit for me if that does end up spawning to where maybe i would look to go more down like here then here then here then here near sunspoon lagoon but yes this is my spot so i'd start out you know either on this mountain or down here and i'd work my way in you know but draw it out so it's a lot easier and you can print it out you can do whatever you want but that really helps me at least so that's what I recommend anyone doing is making a drop spot map 
and kind of just, you know, painting a picture for yourself to make it a lot easier. I promise you it's so worth it. Otherwise, if you're a great fighter and you just, you know, want to fight people, you want to keep people, go for it. The other piece of advice that I would give to you guys is to just play solo ranked, unless you have a crazy good teammate. I promise you it'll be worth it. The amount of XP that you go down in terms of your progression bar from rank to rank, solos puts you up the most, but it punishes you the least from what I found. If you're in a squad and your overall lobby doesn't do that great, like your teammates, you get punished for it way more in squads and duos than you do in solos. It's kind of crazy, but trust me on this, play solos. The people out there telling you to play duos and squads, bro, it was so much easier for me to do it on solos. So just go with solos, trust me. So in terms of just tips for in-game fighting, things like that, if you utilize everything that I've told you in this video, you've gone down the playlist, you've checked out all the better ways to become a good fighter, in game then this is going to come second nature to you and not much that i say from this point on is really going to help too much but what i would say is you know play the game dependent on your weapons don't go for stupid fights if you have bad weapons just to simply put it's much easier said than done but that's the best way i can really say it so if you have like let's say an infiltrator or a gray maven maybe don't push into fights unless you get crazy good opening tags like if you get opening tags with an ar on a guy and he goes down let's say to 50 white health right where he's 50 hp you're 200 you have good mats obviously push that you need to get those better guns right but unless you do that you're going to want to play low key you're going to want to find outskirt locations to where you can get better loot so i'd say play dependent on your weapons play dependent on if you get opening tags on people 200 hp in this game goes a long way it's i mean that's it's an obvious thing to say but it really does help I'm going to link some of the coaches I enjoy watching as well on YouTube who do make content creation videos that have really helped me as well. But yeah, that's really all I have to say. I mean, otherwise, you know, this is the start of your competitive journey. And I, I'd say these are the building blocks. These are the fundamentals that will really help you improve if you master them. And the ranked game mode will come second nature if you just follow everything I've said in this video. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a thumbs up down below and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace. So for anyone who is still watching at this point on, first of all, I love you, thank you. And here are my settings. So I'll be going through them a little bit, not too much, but let me move myself here. Okay, video settings, I'm on performance mode, um, do it or no, because I, I enjoy just, it, it does help me see people in the storm. So that's what I do go with. This is Cooper's as well. Cooper uses Deuteronope for strength. Um, what else do we have here? Your brightness is up a little bit. So, yep. Game settings, I am on East. I did set my preferred item slots here. I have shotgun one and then the rest I just leave because I just like to set them in game. This one is very debatable. So what I would say is if you can learn um, to not play with auto confirm edits, I would say go for it. You know, if you're able to learn the game where you have to confirm your edits before you actually do them, because this is edit on release basically is the setting. So yeah, I would say learn without this for sure. But I have now just developed muscle memory with it on. So I just keep it on. It's not a huge deal if this is what you prefer. So I'd say just go for it. You know, if you if you enjoy using edit on release on, then go for it. There's a lot of pros that still use it and it's fine. You can get away with it. So yeah, just you have to play a little bit smarter if, if you have it on. So for reticle and damage feedback, I do hits and icons. I like to see the icons for sure. It's just more accessibility settings. The number scale, do this dependent on what you like. You know, some people like it at very low. Some people like it higher. I like it higher. So, yep. Now, this one, this is my sensitivity. It may change between now and the next video I make. I don't know. But I first started with clicks, which clicks is like 8.9 X axis, 6.7 Y, I'm pretty sure. Something like that. 
Um, that was way too fast. And I'm on an 800 DPI, by the way, 800 DPI for my mouse. Um, but that was way too fast for me. So then I went to Aviv's. Aviv's is 7.0 and 7.0 for X and Y respectively. That was too high for me even. So now I bumped it down to 6.2. I just found what works for me. This works for me for now. If I have to toggle it down, you know, at some point I will. But for now, this is what I hit all my headshots with for my pumps. 185s go crazy with this one. So I use it. Targeting scope, I have this low. Some people do it even lower, some people do 40, but there's really no point to have high sensitivity if you're aiming down your sights. So targeting is when you know you have a shotgun up, but you're just aiming down the right, you know, the right uh mouse button, and then same with combat SMG or SMG, whatever. Any gun that doesn't require like a scope or anything, but you can still aim down, that is targeting sensitivity. Um scope is when you have a sniper, AR twin mag or a DMR and you that's you know there's no point to have that higher either so building sensitivity editing sensitivity I have those just set to normal thing custom diagonals I have this on this is what enables you to have like controller-esque movement on keyboard and mouse it really helps a lot if you don't know what to do just copy mine it's perfectly fine and yeah that's that this is my volume settings doesn't really matter that much um, visual sound effects. If you guys do not have this on, turn it on. I promise you that's how you're able to see footsteps, directional audio, things like that. So you need that for sure. Um, same with 3D headphones. I do on, I do sound quality high, of course. So that's what I do. Uh, voice chat. It is what it is, whatever you want. These are my binds. So I'll just go down here a little bit. Now for the mouse ones, if you see thumb mouse button, like for wall, I'll show you guys, this is my mouse. Um, it has the two buttons here for each thing. So that's what I utilize on my thumb. I just click it with my thumb. Um, so like for wall and stair, uh, for wall, I have the back mouse button, right? And then for stair, I have the front mouse button. So that's what I do for that. Um, otherwise floor and roof, I just click with my keyboard. It's really easy. And these are all very like beginner friendly binds. So again, if you don't know what to do for your binds, just use mine, it's fine. Um, it'll get you by, so, yep. For harvesting tool, I have it on tab. It's really easy for me to just click to my harvesting tool and just use it. So that's what I recommend for that. And then the rest, I didn't even touch. The vehicle stuff, like I didn't even touch yet. If you know, next season we get other things that are weird. I may have to change these up, but for now, just, you know, copy mine. It is what it is. Doesn't matter. Now, again, for my controller players, I will leave down below controller friendly things as well. It'll be in that same playlist that I'm going to have every other video in as well, that it's going to help you guys a lot. So just go check that out if you, you know, don't know what to do, but, um, yeah. So again, trying to be controller friendly as well. I'm keyboard and mouse though. So what I'm saying with the key binds and stuff obviously only applies to keyboard and mouse. But anyway, if you guys did enjoy the video, I appreciate you as always. And any questions you have, just ask me down below. If I did not cover them in this video, I'll try my best to get to your comments. So appreciate you guys. Peace.